Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm very excited. We have one of the top business leaders, Lisa Sasevich, who is considered the queen of sales conversion. She was ranked on the prestigious Inc. 500 5000 list of America's fastest growing private companies for two years in a row and has been honored as the Extraordinary Entrepreneur of the Year by Women Online Magazine. After 25 years of winning top sales awards and training senior executives at companies like Pfizer, Hewlett Packard, she left corporate America and in just a few short years created a multi-million dollar home-based business. And the most impressive part was while raising two toddlers. I think above all, that's, that's super <laughs> impressive. You know, she's the author of an Amazon best-selling book, Boost Your Sales, How to Use Irresistible Offers Without Being Salesy. Lisa, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And you're right. Of all the jobs I do, the most important one and the hardest one yeah. is the, the, the job of mom. You know, for me, um, it, it kind of hinges on a personal story. Uh, my mom, when I was 19 years old, she was diagnosed and then passed away with lung oh, cancer. I'm so sorry. And, wow. you know, it was shocking. It happened really fast. Uh, we brought her home. She died in my arms. I, I mean, you know, if it has to go that way, you couldn't have asked for a more like conscious experience. Um, but I, when we had her awake, when people came to honor her, I mean, she was a magnificent woman. She was 48. She did so many good things. And she worked out of a little cubicle at a big, a big company. And even in her cubicle, for example, she'd have like stuffed animals hanging all over the place that people could buy and she'd give the money to charity. You know, I mean, she just was always doing great things Giving, like that. Yeah. You know, she'd get the animals donated and then she'd sell them and give the money to cancer research mm -hmm. or Battered Women's Foundation, things that she believed in. Yeah. And it, as amazing as she was, people always saw her as more amazing. But she was limited by being a single mom and having kids. She felt limited. So at her wake, like when people came to pay their respects, the conversation I was hearing was all of this God, if she just would have, and it would have been so great if she could have, and I, you know, she really should have, and it just like reverberated in me, and you know, I started doing some personal development work. The first thing I found was called the Landmark Forum sure. many years ago, and I, I just something clicked in me, Jeremy, that I didn't want to live. I was unwilling to live, no matter how long or short my life was, not going to be a woulda, coulda, shoulda story. Yeah. You know, I mean, I love my mom and she did amazing things and her life was cut short and it was a woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, reverberation um, mm. after her life. And I, I just, I got on the move, you know, and um, through Landmark Education, I learned that you can design your life. You asked, you know, earlier when we were speaking who some of my mentors are, that, you know, you can design your life. You are not, you know, only stuck with the cards that you were dealt. And I've been able to take that further to say, you know, you can design your business because your business is your life. And the profound thing about the irresistible offer is that the offers you make are your life. Yeah. I mean, you're going to deliver on what you sell. So if you sell 80 people into a 10 week coaching session, that's how you're going to spend your energy, your time, you know, your life. So, you know, I am always a stickler with people that study with me. It's, I'm not just a, you know, get it done, no matter what, business mentor. For me, you have to love it. Yeah. You have to love the offer that you made and love not just making the money and having the new clients, but the delivery. You've got to look forward to it. Yeah. And the minute you don't, you need to rework the design. You know? yeah. So from corporate, I got into the groove like most people do, following the normal path, where I had a double life. I was doing, you know, things that to make money for from nine to five. And then on nights and weekends, I was doing my passion. Mm. And I think because of that, not going to lead to what it could have should have existence. It was yeah. like my late twenties, early thirties, where I said, you know what? No more. I'm going to figure out how to do, make my difference and make money and be doing that all the time. And now that's what we do. That's what we teach. Yeah. You know, that's what our, sales structures empower people to do is yeah. to make a huge difference and make money doing it yeah. you know, that's that's you know kind of 
where mm-hmm. I came from to come to that conclusion. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's sure. that's got to be very painful, of course. Um, you know, everything's got its blessings, right? Yeah. Um, I feel my mom. She talks to me. You know, it was, yeah. it was a long time ago. And look what the gift she gave to yeah. the world by birthing that fire in me. Yeah, she pushes you yeah, yeah. to do more. Um, what was your passion like then compared to now? Was it the same... Was it the same passion to sell or did it change throughout the years at all when I mean, you're doing it the you know, night and weekends? My passion, well, there's a couple things. Back then, like many people, it's painful where you know you have a gift to give, but you don't know how to articulate it. You don't know how to get it out, you know, and, and I sat there for a long time. And that's why I am more passionate than ever now to help move people into really living that vision, not mm-hmm. just being stuck with it. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing. When people do our course, here's another seed. One of the pre-works, there's two. There's the system part, seeing your system. But the other part that we give you right up front, like literally they register, they click, they register, and it's in their inbox, is um, a, another piece of training from me where I walk you through and it has a worksheet on articulating your million dollar value. What is your offer? What is that unique transformation that's like inside you? You can feel it, but when you try to describe it to your mother-in-law, she yeah. goes, "Huh? <laughs> you know, how, how do you get the exact words?" My mother-in-law says that to me a lot, to, so I'm gonna have to pay attention. No. Yes, I'll send it over to you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so my passion, you know, the more I distinguish my systems, the more I know I can help people, the more on fire I am to make sure that you know we get our work out to. I'm not I'm not passionate about sales actually just so you know I'm not at all I'm passionate about transformation and transformation does not happen unless somebody sees a new possibility which is really what your talk does it opens a world mm-hmm. and then they get the invitation to step into it mm-hmm. so I could care less about sales but I really care that people get the opportunity to see a new possibility and then an invitation that gives them the chance to make it real Mm-hmm. And that's really what we're up to. Yeah. So, Lisa, tell me about when you decide to leave. Cause it's also, even though you have this passion, it's also not easy to leave corporate America. When you oh, yeah. have two kids, what was yeah. that like at the time when you decided to do that? Well, when I left corporate, I didn't have the kids yet. But I'll tell you, handing oh. back that Ford Taurus company car and, um, you know, all of the different ways, you know, the 401k and the prizes right. that I had won, you know, yeah. you lose your points for prizes. Um, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. And, you know, it was another gift that my mom gave me. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but, you know, I think her whole life savings was, it was in the house, that little house that we lived in. Mm. And so after everything was all said and done, I got $50,000 in a bank account, you know, from my mom. And I sat on it and didn't do anything with it for many years. And um, when I finally, I was working for Pfizer, I had about a two-year lifespan at corporate at corporations until I just, like, could not handle the paperwork and justifying my existence through paperwork anymore. And so I um, you know, I decided to go off and do my own thing and I got involved in some crazy network marketing thing that turned out to be kind of a bust. But you know, it was was a blessing because it made me take the leap. And you know, from there I actually started using my time going into a relationship company, another personal development company and helping them to enroll more people because these were courses that I believed in. Right. And it's interesting because that's actually where all my work comes from. You know, people will say, will it work for me if I don't have a product? Will it work for me if I'm not teaching business? Yeah. Well, actually, everything I developed came from my passion of having people buy a course that helped women to create better relationships with men. So it worked in the relationship space. So really, um, it was for everybody that's selling that intangible, you know, chiropractic, what do you, you don't walk out with a box? Um, you know, like, like all of the services, Service based the, stuff. you know, the, 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 the Eastern and Western medicine that you can't see, um, you know, if you're a lawyer, a financial planner, a health professional, we're all selling the intangible right. and it just, it requires a different language, a different set of rules. Yeah. And you know, when I was pushing Viagra for Pfizer, like, <laughs> is that yeah. an easy sell or no? Um, well, you get a lot of calls from people who are not really prescribing it, but they sure want the samples. <laughs> <laughs> so transition to two kids. What was the hardest part about running the business with two young kids? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Um, you know, like most people who want to make a difference doing their own thing, I started out 
you know, selling one-on-one, -on -one, just having conversations and people saying, sure, I'll work with you, and then serving one-on-one. -on -one. So coaching, basically. And that model, if you're in it, you know, or if you have a practice, you know, you're selling one-on-one -on -one and you're serving one-on-one, -on -one, that model has a cap, right? Like, especially if it's really one-on-one, -on -one, like you're a solopreneur, it's got a cap of about eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year, and at that point, you hate your life. Right. Like you love what you do, you're but every client, it. it means yeah. you're not working out. You're it's an hour less with my kids, you know. Yeah. And so I got to that point. I was so proud of myself that I was, you know, up to that eighty to one twenty as a coach, not a certified coach, just someone giving my advice. Yeah. But. Um, it was hard because I knew I had a cap. I knew I couldn't go any further and I knew I couldn't keep a living like that. Yeah. So I think, you know, if I could share one more, like really, um, I don't know, maybe even two more, but, but this one, um, huge, huge distinction that changed everything for me is that once the first thing that happened is I started what we'll call, you know, people say leverage, I want to leverage myself, you know, and they think about serving groups, group programs, but, I actually want to break it down for you further because this is really where the magic is. Yeah. When I started leveraging my selling, getting the word out instead of one by one by one, meet this person at Starbucks, go to this networking meeting, have another Starbucks, you know, people want to pick your brain. It just It's an endless cycle that doesn't go very far, very fast. Yeah. When I learned how to create my act, my talk, and make my offer to more than one person, whether it's Doreen in her living room with 12 people or me in the back of the Olive Garden with a, with a chamber of commerce in Tucson, Arizona, yeah. um, all of a sudden, the leverage, I started being able to put a lot more people into my business. But then what happens is, how do you serve them all when right. you're one-on-one? -on -one? So that was painful. And of course, that caused me the key to being able to transform that is seeing your system. Being able to see how, what's the question. Because once you see, like, we've got this five-step system to build your talk and your irresistible offer. Yeah. Now, you know, I've got 1,100 people in our current course from all over You would the never world. sleep if it was just, yeah. I couldn't do that one on one, but I couldn't do it effectively if I didn't distinguish my yeah. system. So that's why we start people with, you know, on the leveraging your sales, you've got to be able to say what's in their head to sell one to many. So that's the first pre-work that you get. And then on the leveraging the delivery, you've got to be able to start to see what are the questions I'm asking every time? What are the steps I'm doing every time? And whenever you guys have that thought, did I already say that part? That part is an indication that there's a system. Mm -hmm. So when you can leverage how you're selling, one to many, and you can leverage how you're serving, this is where we create an upward spiral and, you know, where you can really live that dream and the, the, the vastness of the difference that you have and really touching that many people. Yeah. And it's so much easier and so much more possible than people realize. And that is really what we're working to expose people to and, and have people start moving toward, you know, with the simple promise of the Speak to Sell Bootcamp, there's this huge possibility that comes along with it. Yeah. So what's yeah. one of the big milestones, Lisa, that you consider in, in your business from when you went from the corporate America to early on till, till now? What were some of those big turning points? Hmm. You send me that question, right? Let me see. We haven't looked, we haven't looked at this, like, our advanced talk at all. <laughs> but I think I remember that one. Um, here. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I already talked about identifying my system. That's really when, once that I started to see, yeah. I had eight one-on-one -on -one clients in a row, like eight VIP days, and it, I realized, oh my God, I'm starting the offer with all of them, then we're figuring out the content, then we're positioning, then we're seeding, and then we're learn teaching them how to transition into the offer. That's our five steps. Yeah. But I'd say the other big one that, like the predecessor to that, uh, was 2009. I'm in Tucson, Arizona. Again, the kids are newborn and three years old. Michael is in his surgical heart transplant fellowship okay so that's like intense one in one word um, <laughs> not much money but really intense work and you know making a huge difference oh, probably working around the clock yeah working around the clock right yeah. and that's what it takes at that point in your in that career so yeah. um i'm home i don't have any time for myself i'm doing everything one-on-one -on -one, one and um the kids are finally sleeping so it's probably one or two in the morning which is really when i got my quiet which totally trashed any chance of working out the next day trying to you know you guys you know some of you in this cycle you know something's got to change yeah. and um i remember being in front of my email and an invitation coming through to come to an event called online success 
blueprint workshop. You know, a gal named Allie Brown used to run it many years ago, 2008, 2009. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore, but it spoke right to me. It's like, I've got to figure out a way to get this online. Yeah. And I remember the thing was $3,000. The workshop was $3,000. And I just was like, it's just not even possible. I mean, our rent was like 1500 We didn't even have a car payment, just an old car. And, but it kept, she kept sending emails, you know, and some of you say, oh, people send too many emails. You know what? If she hadn't sent too many emails. My life would not look the way it does right now. Right. So keep that in mind. You know, yeah. when you're following the people that you love their work, they are trying to open a possibility, trying to catch you at the moment where your defenses are down and your heart is open enough right. that you say yes to yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So I, you know, got the 15th email about it and yeah, annoyed. I went, <laughs> you know why you're annoyed? Because you want to freaking do it and you're right. not letting yourself. Yeah. So I, it's you know, a I button. Said, you know what? Yeah. This last email, she said, look, last shot, I have an eight pay. You know, it was eight payments of $300 a month or, or four, eight, eight payments of $400 a month, $3,200. Yeah. Or, I don't know. I can't do math on it. <laughs> yeah, $3,200. $3, it was about 3000 You know, I said, yeah. you know what? Uh, there's, like, that was half our mortgage, but I'm doing it. And it was, you know, it was like March and the thing was in November. So I clicked. I put my credit card in. I mean, you know, we did not have extra money stashed under the pillow. And, yeah. um from that commitment before in the eight months before I even ever got to the workshop my online business started to take off I started to see things newly I started to treat myself differently I started to interact with my clients differently I knew I had a new four hundred dollar a month payment and when the payment dropped off my income was up four hundred a month still and from the time by the time I got there I was transformed it was the first time I made a significant uncomfortable stretch investment in myself because it made sense to me you know I hope I make that much sense to some of you here today and that you would allow me to be that catalyst for your transformation and so I said yes and you know investing in myself like that I got so much out of it that once I got to the seminar you know, I told myself I'm not gonna buy anything else I'm just gonna do you know implement what I bought but she made an even bigger offer there to work with her for a year. Yeah. And I didn't see it coming, and I cer certainly didn't have the money. I just finished the eight pay. And, you know, I think she had a $20,000 level and a $100,000 level. And I'm watching, I'm, I was 40 at the time, so you guys can do the math. Um, and I'm watching uh, some people on the stage that had worked in this program with her, you know, the years before. And I'm thinking, you know what? If I don't do this right now when this is bubbling up and so fierce, even though. I have no access to $100,000, right? Um, if I don't figure this out, if I don't do this, I am going to have a woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah, story. you think back to your mom. Wonder. Yeah. yeah. So I went for it. I We we use like doctor loans that are sort of on the promise that you're going to become a doctor. It's change that I had left from my mom, yeah. um, credit cards, and I went for it. And yeah. thank God, you know, my husband at the time, Michael, was like, you should do it. I mean, thank God, not everybody has that supportive of a partner. And, yeah. you know, I'll never, I, I will always thank him for that. And um, in that year, Jeremy, from saying yes to myself at a $100,000 level, my business went from 100000 that part where I was stuck, and I started to see my system, leverage my sales with my signature talk and my offer. Ten months later, as hard as this is to believe, we did $2.2 million in sales. Wow. Still from home. That's kids amazing. are still babies. It wasn't even on my vision board. Like, I wasn't even thinking. I got to tell you, like, I wasn't even thinking that big. I just wanted, like, a stable $10,000 a month right. instead of all the up and down. So, um, and seven months after making that $100,000 investment on the way to that $2.2 million, yep. I was selling my own mentorship for $100,000. Wow. So, you know, the big turning point and the big lesson for me that I abide by and I teach because it, it really, for me, is very, very real yeah. is you've got to be the client that you're looking to attract. You know, if I became a high ticket client that said yes on the spot and hmm. seven months later I had people saying yes to me on the spot at $100,000 a pop. Yeah. So... If you're out there and you're thinking, well, people love me, but they have to think about it. They don't buy from me. Are you coming to something like this that you love and you know it's for you, but you have yeah. to think about it, right? I mean, this might sound like 
some kind of a sales tactic, but I am telling you, you apply it anywhere in your life. Yeah. If people are always looking for a deal from you, always wanting to trade, are you always, you see something you want and they're like, can I trade you? Can I get a deal? That's what you're going to attract. Yeah. You know, if you're someone that buys stuff and you say, oh, it's the refund thing is in 30 days and you mark it on your calendar and you send it back, you know, are That's you surprised why people are refunding stuff to you? Yeah. So, I mean, it's business karma. It's powerful. Yeah. Business karma, you know? Yeah.